Hey guys, what's going on? Today I want to give you a glimpse into our latest rig, RoboGirl, and show off some of the functionality that we're given her. So she was built with our latest rig builder, Colossus 3.0, which means that she's a lot faster, but she will also require Maya 2020 or later to be able to run. I'll leave a link to her in the description and let's get to it. First thing to note is that she has global scale. How cool is that? Pretty standard in all our rigs. So if we go down to our foot now, you can see she has these pivot points, which is pretty standard for Colossus rigs. You can manipulate different parts of the foot. And then she has sub controls for her toes. And then if you go into her main foot control here, this is IK by default. But then if you click on the settings control next to it, which are these spheres, you have a few features like preserve volume, which means that as you stretch this bad boy, it gets thinner. We have stretchy here, which if it's turned off, the foot won't stretch with this control. And then we have standard stuff like IKFK. She has an attribute called pin. So for example, if we want the pole vector to stay put and the knee to also stay put with the pole vector, we turn that on. And now we can move the IK foot freely without having the knee also move with it. Next thing we have is upper length, lower length, just lengthening different segments of the leg. And then we also have bendy viz, which is pretty standard. And then if we go to the IK foot control itself, you see that we have a few things. We have gimbal visibility here. We have foot bank, foot roll, toe pivot, and heel pivot, as well as some different spaces for the IK. Moving up, we have standard CAG control. It's got an offset as well. And then we have a three point IK system. So moving just the pelvis or the chest will move the whole torso. And you can also offset it in the middle with this control here. Oops, and we also have this top control for the IK to move that around. And if you click on the settings for spine, you can see we have preserve volume again. And then we also have stretchy and IKFK viz. So if we go to FK, for example, we get a nice interpolation as we move those controls. We have a few more joints between them that automatically get rotate when we rotate different controls. And we also have tweaks for each part of that as well for more fine detail. Then we have these little tweak controls for manipulating the singlet shirt on both sides. And then moving up to here, we got the clavicle control. got the main arm controls FK by default and then we also have these different tweak controls along the way standard for all types of limbs and then to come to this settings control here for the hand we have same things preserve volume stretchy IKFK pin bendy viz and if we do orient to wrist for example You'll see if we go to IKFK mode, by default we have the hand following whatever the orientation of this control is. But if we swap this to turn off orient to wrist, now we have the wrist following along whatever the rotation is of the arm. Like so. Moving along we have individual FK controls for the fingers. We have also curl attribute for each of them. But what I enjoy now is we have this master control, which when rotated, we can really quickly get easy poses for the fingers, which can be quite helpful. And it also has a scale for spreading the fingers and also one if you want the thumb to also follow, you, follow with the control. Moving across to the other side, this is where things get a bit spicy. We have this robotic arm, and you can see the same attributes as the other side, but we also have cannon reveal and sword reveal. So if we turn on cannon reveal, we get this massive cannon come out with its own controls. You can 
scale it. And as well as a cannon, we also have a sword. And then on that sword, we have FK controls that we can move around to make it do crazy stuff. And now on this main star control here, if we move this control, we have the arm detached like a rocket arm. There's also a blast attribute if you want to not have to move the transform to that control. And then we have other attributes here called auto orient forearm. If we turn this off, then we won't have it facing wherever the connection point is. And then we also have another attribute called open rocket flaps, which will just open this back portion here. Pretty cool. And then we have the same thing, the master fingers on this side as well. Oh, and then the second star here, if we move this out, you can see that we have this telescopic setup for the arm, which is cool if you want to punch someone super far away from you. Boom, like so. Okay, moving up to the face, pretty standard face setup. We have look at control with different spaces here. Head control and neck control. And we have these squash and stretch, one for the jaw. And then a main one for the whole head. And then if we go in, we have all standard stuff. We've got a main control for the brows with little tweak controls you can translate and rotate. You can also rotate the main control. Nose control, um, and then eye, we have standard blink controls for upper and lower, little tweak ones as well. And then if we go to this main eyelid control, we have an attribute for blinking. And then we have a blink bias, whether you want that blink to be blinking upper or lower. So that's 75% by default. And then we also have a lid follow attribute. So if we turn that off, now the lids won't follow along with the eyeball rotation. And on top of that, we have an eyeball control. Move the eyeball around. And you can also scale the whole pupil and iris. And then we also have a pupil scale to be able to scale the pupil individually. Moving down to the mouth, we have smile control here, or corner control, it can go in and out. Smaller controls for moving upper and lower lips. And then you also have little tweak controls as well for different parts. And if we move this jaw control here, we've got tongue controls inside, we have teeth controls that can scale. But we also have on both sides the zipper, which we can use to zip the lips. And on top of that, we have this main mouth control here, which we can move around, we can scale it. We have upper lip curl, lower lip curl, and we can use that together to get these type of shapes. And then on top of that, we have these little tweak controls here. Going away from the main mouth, we have ear controls, pretty standard, and then we have different types of hair controls as well. So also I didn't mention we have a space on the head, so if you wanted to rotate the neck and have the head not oriented with the neck, we can just turn that space to world. And now we have that head oriented that way. And if we go back to the main root control here, we can see that we have a few different settings. We have control viz. We have geo viz, joint viz, and then we can lock the geo or not lock it. Yeah, so that's Robogirl in a nutshell. I'll leave a link to her in the comments and I hope you guys have fun with her. Happy animating.